Since I got a new table saw, it's finally time to build a proper outfeed slash assembly table. I love these Bora centipedes, but I really need to reclaim this one for work outside of the shop, and it's just not the best setup here, and there's a ton of space underneath that I could be utilizing for storage. I do have plans available for this if you'd like to build it yourself, and like most of my projects, I like to design it so you guys can just use dimensional lumber if you'd like. Just 2x4s and 4x4s in this case, basically just cutting off the rounded edges. But for mine, I went with hard maple because, well, I just wanted to. I do have a dedicated video on my channel showing my process for milling hardwoods if you'd like to check that process out. So we'll skip that for this one and just pick up cutting everything to final size. For the joinery on the main frame of the workbench, I'm using half laps. I don't know, when I picture nice heavy duty benches, I just picture true mortise and tenon or half lap joinery, and I just wanted to show a different technique here that I haven't shown a lot. They're really simple to do and incredibly strong. Like strong enough if I wanted to park my truck on top of this thing. And they can be cut so many different ways too. I'm using a dado stack here in my table saw, but I actually went ahead and made a whole separate video where I show a bunch of ways to cut these using different tools. So be sure to check that out if you want to see other options that all get great results. I didn't have any extra material to use as test pieces, so I just went the route of slowly creeping up on the right depth that these needed to be cut. Always the safe thing to do, rather than cutting off too much right from the start. So after I had the depth and width dialed in with my stop block, I could get the top half laps cut on all six legs. And you'll see on the four outside corners I'm cutting away on both the outside and inside edge. This will all make more sense once we get to assembly. With the top joints done, next I can move my fence and cut the bottoms. To avoid moving my fence a bunch of times, I made this first pass on all six legs first to make sure they were all exactly the same. Then I could move the fence for the last time to the final width and finish clearing away the material in all six legs. Now that our Lincoln logs are all cut, it's just a matter of putting everything together. I planned on driving some screws in to hold everything as the glue dried. You can even put them on the inside so you can't see them at the end. But as I went to assemble, I realized I didn't have enough of the right length on hand to work. I was running out of time this day anyway, so I just glued everything up and left them in clamps to dry. Doesn't get any stronger than these face grain to face grain glue joints anyways. The beauty of these joints is that as long as you're cutting square to begin with, everything just comes together exactly as it should. Once the glue dried on those and I got back to working on this, I could get the two pieces joined together with the side rails by adding glue to the pockets, using bar clamps to pull everything tight, and I did pick up some screws in the meantime to get them held in place. Here I'm adding a couple cross supports for the bottom shelf, and these are recessed so when I add the 3 quarter inch plywood, it'll end up flush with the frame. This is the black melamine I already had and was using with the Bora Centipede. 
I planned on just using it as the top again, but by using it here for the bottom shelf, that justified it to myself to go ahead and buy a nice fresh sheet for the top. And it's a heck of a lot cheaper than plywood anyway. It was kind of a gamble to cut the melamine so tight here, but I managed to get it in with just a couple small chips on one edge. It can't really go anywhere at this point, so I just tacked it in with a couple brad nails. I had to leave the top cross supports out to get the bottom in, so once that was done I could go ahead and add these to help prevent the top work surface from sagging over time. It was sure nice to build this up on a table, but now it was time to move this heavy beast down to the floor and flip it over to add the leveling feet. I didn't want to try and build this to end up perfectly flush with my table saw, because floors are never perfect. It's better to build it a little short and then use the leveling legs to bring it up where you want it. And speaking of the height, if you're interested in the plans to build this for yourself and want to use it as an outfit table for your table saw, even if you have a different saw than mine, you can very easily adjust the length of your legs here below that bottom half lap. Most saws should be within the working range of these leveling feet, but if you did want to make the legs a little longer or shorter, you could do it here below that half lap. That way none of the other measurements for the rest of the build would change, and it's a really versatile design for any saw. Real quick, I want to take a minute to talk about the sponsor of this video, Ariat, who has been a longtime supporter of the channel. As always, there's a link down in the video description for you to save 10% off your first order. But if you're watching this when it's first released, you know it's holiday shopping season, which means it's a great time for deals. And right now, all the way through Cyber Monday, Ariat is having a big hoodie promotion on top of their Black Friday sale. This charcoal heather hoodie with the awesome camo flag on the back is one I picked from the list. It's a nice lightweight hoodie, but with the brushed fleece on the inside, it's super warm and comfortable. It's not just men's either, there's a bunch for women and kids as well. I never thought I'd be doing some modeling on YouTube, but it really is easy for me to stand behind these products that I've been wearing for years. So be sure to check out those links down in the video description to see what else is included in the Black Friday sale. I know I will be. At this point the base could be done and I almost left it as is, but I did want to add at least one bank of drawers as well as a section with adjustable shelves. I've been needing a spot in my shop for small offcuts that you can't just throw away. That stuff always comes in handy and these shelves are going to be perfect for that. I did a quick dry fit to make everything fit as it should and then decided to pull it out to make the next steps a lot easier. Here I'm drilling adjustable shelf and holes on the panel closest to the table saw as well as on the back of the drawer section. And then to join the panels I'll be using pocket hole screws. Up next I decided to go ahead and add my drawer slides. Can't beat being able to get this done with your panels laying flat on the table if you can. The strip of wood I'm temporarily nailing on here is just to help in assembly. If you've ever worked with the Craig pocket holes, you know they tend to push the pieces away from where you're wanting as you're screwing. And since I can't really clamp the center of this panel, this creates a nice backstop, so the panel simply moves tight right where I want it, and then I can just pry that strip off afterwards. Then with my lowercase h shaped cabinet pre-assembled, I could slip it into place and get it locked in with screws into the legs. I'm not sure what I want to do with the other half yet, so I didn't want to completely fill it with cabinets just for the sake of doing it. I still need to build a bunch of jigs for the new table saw, and I'm thinking I'll most likely end up doing some custom organization to store those there. It's always nice to leave yourself options that you can grow into as you need. It is worth mentioning though, if you wanted to build this, you could simply make two of these drawer and shelf sections for the other side. The dimensions would be exactly the same. Now for the top work surface, I'm using a layer of 3 quarter inch plywood screwed to a layer of 3 quarter inch melamine on top. 
One thing to be aware of here is I'll be routing out some clearance grooves in the worktop for my miter gauge and sleds on the table saw. So you can see here I have those roughly marked out to make sure I won't have any screws in the way. Rather than trying to make sure both sheets are cut exactly the same, I like to leave one a little oversized so I can come through with a Freud flush trim router bit to get them flushed up perfect. Now to protect the edges, I'm trimming it out with some hard maple. I'm only gluing and nailing into the plywood layer here, so down the road I can just unscrew the melamine sheet and replace it. I'm not one that overly cares about a perfectly clean worktop, but since this table is literally built to last forever, it will be nice to be able to replace just the melamine 10 years from now if I want to. Just a slight 16th inch round over bit to ease the edges, and then I got the top attached with some angle brackets from underneath. Here's my bonehead move of the build though. I meant to build the top to be the same size as my saw. So when cutting the melamine to size, I was supposed to cut it three quarters of an inch smaller on each side for a total of an inch and a half to account for the maple trim. But instead, I cut it small by an inch and a half on each end for a total of three inches. Oh well. With the top on for good, I could get those leveling feet adjusted to where it's just a hair lower than the saw. And here I'm using a straight edge to carry over the miter slot locations onto the table so I could get those routed out. To make the table easier to slide out and cut those slots, I figured it was a good time to add the casters. I really like these with the mounting plates that you can attach to your bench and then the casters can be easily added and removed. I don't plan on moving this frequently, so it's nice not having them on there sticking out all the time. Also, I can just buy more mounting plates if I want and put them on other things and just use the same set of casters without paying full price for another set. Pretty cool. And now to get absolutely blasted with sawdust. Definitely gotta have the dust mask on for this one. I'm using a Freud half inch mortising bit here to make the grooves and two passes. I'm not going for a perfectly tight slot here to match the table saw. You just need to give the bars somewhere to go. By making them a little oversized, you don't have to worry about the table always being lined up exactly perfect with the saw. I've never had an outfeed table this nice, and now we can put it to work building the drawers. Just glue and screws here for some strong shop drawers. I probably don't do a good enough job of actually asking for it, but if you're enjoying the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up. And of course, hit that subscribe button if you're not already. Turning on notifications so you don't miss the next time I post, and engaging down in the comments are all great and free ways to help the channel. I read and reply to every comment if you ever have any questions as well. Something I've been doing a lot is just using an awl for things like attaching these drawer slides. With these tiny screws and soft plywood, there's not really a need to pre-drill. I just like to take the awl and make a starter hole on my line right where I want it. Super accurate and nothing shifts around. The screws just go right where I want them. For the drawer front, it's nice to plan ahead if possible and consider grain direction flowing from piece to piece. If I wasn't making a video, no one besides me would ever see and notice this, but I'm the one in here working and looking at this thing all day, and little things like this just make me happy.
The last thing to finish up was a couple shelves for that other section, using up some more of the black melamine here, and of course we gotta make the front edge look good with some iron-on edge banding. I haven't done anything here yet, but another area I could take advantage of is hanging easily accessible items here on the outside of the panels. I'm really liking how this turned out. Like I said, I do have plans available that are linked down below, and I'd love to see how you guys customize it to fit your needs. And thanks again to Ariat. Be sure to check out those links in the description to save yourself some money. And by supporting my sponsors, you're supporting me, which I greatly appreciate. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.